Hello, Doc here. Um, this recording is going to demonstrate how to connect Expression Web 4 to a SQL Server and uh, make that data connection. Um, it is significantly different, the, uh, the interface when you're using Dreamweaver, so that will be covered in a separate video. The principles are the same, though. So uh, let's get started with it. The first thing that we need to do is we need to create a new document. And since we're going to be doing a uh, data connection, we need to make that an ASPX document. And uh, that just means it's an ASP.NET um, document. So uh, what we have to do, the first thing that we need to do is um, it automatically set up a form. We're not going to worry about that right now. Uh, but first thing we need to do is we need to establish a connection to the SQL Server. We are using a SQL Server. So over here in the toolbox, uh, what I'm looking at is I'm going into the ASP.NET controls and um, I am looking for, uh, in this case, it's a SQL data source. Now, if I were using an XML data source, I would use that. If I was using an Access database, I would use that. Uh, and so, uh, since we're using a SQL server, I'm going to pull that down in here and uh, click on that. And then I'm going to right click on that. And the first thing I want to do is I want to open this quick tag editor. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to change this ID so that it's something that makes sense to me, so that I will know what connection I'm doing. So I'm going to give it a name um, that begins with the letter ICT. 475 SQL server and that'll just be the ID and so I go ahead and I choose that and it uh, puts it in there now uh, when you the first time you come in there's a little window that pops up if you it asks you if you want to make something visible you want to do that and that's um, what makes this visible in your page otherwise it's it's not visible in your page and I can't replicate that because I've previously gone through that step but uh, if you have a pop-up window that says do you want to make something visible you do want to make that visible so I click on this little arrow and what I want to do is I want to click configure data source and since I don't have any of these set up I come in here and it is blank now there's uh, the first thing I want to do is I want to choose a new connection string. Within that, I want to choose a Microsoft SQL Server. Now, if I was doing um, Microsoft Access Database, if I had an ODBC connection, uh, etc., etc., I could choose those. For instance, I could connect to an Oracle database. But since I am using the Microsoft SQL Server, I want to select that, and then I click on OK. That brings me into the connection properties window. Now for the server name, what you want to do is uh, put the name of the server uh, that you're going to be using for the connection. In our case, it's going to be an IP address. So you will use the IP address that the uh, instructor sent to you in order to do this. Often if you have your own domain name, uh, you just enter the, the domain name and SQL Server. That's the details that you would get from whoever is hosting your site. So I've gone ahead and I've entered the IP address of where the, I have the server set up at this time. Now, the way that you log on to the server is going to depend upon the way that you've got things set up. Uh, because of the way that we have things set up at this point in time, uh, we're going to use the SQL Server authentication. Now, it may be that you're watching this in a semester other than when I'm recording this. In that case, you may need to use Windows authentication, and you'll be provided with that information by the instructor uh, when the time is right. So I'm going to go ahead and enter my username and my password. and the password is specifically to that SQL Server so the the account that was set up with that now the first thing that I want to do uh, at this point is um, test the connection there we go get the right password in there and it should give you the text connection succeeded 
So that allows us to uh, check to make sure we're making that connection. Then once we have that connection working, we've got the ability to go in and connect to a specific database. Uh, the one that we are using is the AdventureWorks LT. So you will select that and um, then you click OK. Now what this is telling you and, and uh, what this is this error it's not an error it's just an information box what it's telling you is that because we're using the SQL Server authentication that anybody who has access to the site from an administrator role will be able to see what that password is uh, and so there's no way of avoiding that at this point in time so, so go ahead and click OK and um, then you choose next and what this is going to do is um, bring up a way for you to start interacting with that database so we'll uh, we'll save that connection and then what it does in this next column it allows us to uh, go into the database and start pulling records from uh, that or columns that we want to use for for the different records in the different tables so it, it comes up with a series of tables that are available to us I'm going to go ahead and just choose customer for now. When I choose customer, you'll notice that the columns that are in here uh, that are available to us um, are displayed. So I'm going to choose uh, first name, middle name, last name, and um, oh, let's just say email address and phone. So we'll just choose that. So you can choose from the available uh, sources that are in there or the columns that are available in there and then if you wanted to you could go in and you could specify certain details we're not going to do that at this point for instance I could say last name is equal to um, Tharp if I wanted to do that now in my database I don't have any that are equal to Tharp so I'm not going to use any of uh, these limiters but that is where you could do that you could also go in and, and tell it in what order to sort things as it's displayed so I would I'll choose last name there uh, then by first name and this is a, a typical sort as you would use in uh, anything where you're trying to sort data so the the interface is pretty clear and we're not going to go into any of the advanced at this point so then you click next and what it allows you to do is to test this query and what that does is it goes out it looks at that database and then it pulls up a set of records here that match the criteria that you've done now in our class we have this uh, test database set up with data so you'll be able to connect to this and go ahead and start seeing data so then we click on finish and that establishes the data connection. Now this is still included in this form and I want to pull it out of that form. So I'm just going to grab all this information and I'm going to pull it outside of that form because I'm not using this form at this moment. Okay, so we have our connection here now what do we do with it well in um, expression I can come over here and I can choose grid view and I can drag it into here and then that's gonna set up columns based upon the available data um, I, I choose the data source which I just set up the ICT uh, the SQL server I can uh, choose to uh, I've already got the data source. I can edit the columns. I can add new columns. I can enable paging, sorting, or selection. Um, and so you've got the flexibility to go ahead and uh, manipulate the, the way that this data is going to be presented at this time. So now what I need to do is I want to go and see if that data actually works. But before I can do that, I've got to save this file. So I'm going to just save it into... Uh, the folder that I'm working in at the moment so 
So now I come up to uh, preview and I'm going to preview it in Firefox. And what it does is it goes through. This is the web page that it comes up. Now you'll notice that this is looking at the local host. I haven't published this to the server yet because I'm, I'm doing the preview in browser. But it still goes ahead and it establishes the connection with that database and it pulls all the records that are in that database because I haven't limited by anything and it makes those available on the web page. Now just to confirm that this is working I'm going to go ahead and publish this site and um, we will go and visit it there. And I check it up on the server and the information is there as I would expect it to be. So we know that our data connection is working and that completes the first step.